an airbrush. But side feed? Yeah? Yes, this is the Eclipse Takumi. And this is a side feed. So the Eclipse range has been designed for all star versatility. And that is a phrase you might want to take a drink every time you hear me say that. Uh, it's the tagline for this product. And you know, after using it for a couple of months, it's hard to disagree. I've happily run enamels, airbrushes, primers, anything you could think through it. Uh, this is the uh, Eclipse, uh, sorry, this is the uh, Iowata CMC Custom Micron. It's the finest airbrush made by human hands. The problem is you don't want to be running everything through the finest airbrush made by human hands. You only want that for absolute precision and really blisteringly small detail. When you're base coating, the, well, the, it, it clogs. When you're running varnishes through it, it clogs. When you're airbrushing tanks or titans or things bigger than a space marine, you haven't got that fine dispersal pattern that you can get with a 0.35 needle. And that's what this is designed for. Fine to medium to wide ranges. So this is a 0.3 nozzle and I've run everything through it with no hiccup. I'll be base coating Dawn with this thing. It does fine detailing pretty well, it does base coating, and everything in between with Iowata's typical superb build quality. And it's a side feed, you know, who, who would have thought? Okay, let's open this sucker up, shall we? So this is what you'll find inside the box. It comes with a quick start uh, guide, which nobody ever reads. I didn't read it. We all know how to use it. If you're watching this review, you know how to use an airbrush. It is useful, I guess, to have that graphical explanation of where the cup goes. And one of the nice touches of this is that you can use it either side. It can be left or right-handed. So you can there's a little uh, button on the left-hand side that comes pre-made pre with. That you can change it to the other side, and voila. Now, there's a guy out there in the world who is paid to test these airbrushes. And that's what that little sheet is. There's somebody out there right now airbrushing sheet after sheet after sheet to make sure that it all works. Okay, it comes with a little chuck, some Iowata lube, and it is important to lube up your airbrush, especially the needle. And that isn't a synonym that's not being dirty, it, it's important to use lubrication on, on the brush. Okay, we have a dual action trigger control, which means you control independently the amount of air or the amount of paint flowing through it. And here we have the side cap, and this is me actually reading it, just to make sure I don't mess anything up. But it's fairly straightforward. The engineering on this thing is superb. You slot it in and it creates such a tight bond. It is perfect. It is the perfect bond. Uh, and this is my first side real airbrush. And I feel a little spoilt. Because I feel like I should have used maybe like a cheap Chinese one before coming to this point. Uh, because it, the, everything is engineered to the nth degree with Iowata products. It's all metal inside. There are no plastic components. It has a, a high factor of wear and tear to it. I'm using these tools every single day. I need these to be not only precise, but robust as well. So that's me imaginary, uh, using an imaginary, imaginary airbrush spray on a painted miniature. You got the cap that goes on top. That's very important. One thing I have found airbrushing is that sometimes you forget the placement of the side feed. When you tip it down at sort of like a 45 degree angle, it can spill. Okay, so we have the needle sitting really nice and flush against the tip. The lock and the mechanism at the back. Uh, so that determines how far you can drag back the needle. I never ever use that. All my trigger control uh, it just comes naturally. I never feel like I need to have almost like a baby training program on my airbrush. I want complete control of what I do with it. Yeah, that's something to be wary of. Make sure when you tip it at a 45 degree angle that the paint doesn't spill out of it. Angle it backwards and you won't have any problems. Okay, let's get into a test spray, shall we? Uh, so a side cup, 
rather unusual. Again, I've never used them before. Uh, the perceived wisdom online is that you should get a gravity feed. Gravity feed is superior. Read any article that relates to Warhammer and airbrushing, and you're more than likely to hear gravity feed and dual action. Dual action, great, yes, 100% uh, agreed on. Uh, gravity feed, not so much after using this airbrush. Uh, I would certainly recommend for your best airbrush, your airbrush, your main airbrush, getting the custom Micron C because that thing can paint the eyes on a gnat. Whereas with this, you want to use it with Titans, uh, varnishes, priming, like we're about to do, like we're about to test. And this is my first experience with a side feed. Uh, and I can't ex say I experienced much in the way of a difference in terms of spray quality or an intuition using it. I've been using an airbrush for nearly 10 years now and I didn't feel like I was disadvantaged by using the side feed. In fact, the way the tagline goes, it's recommended for absolute precision because you can see along the gun barrel, you can see right along it, it's not interrupted by the, gra by the gravity feed cup. Uh, I mean, in a doomsday scenario, cle uh, uh, cleaning this would be actually easier than the gravity feed because if you mess this up, you leave varnish overnight. Well, you can just replace the cup. Whereas the gravity feed, you'd have to replace the main body. Okay, so here I am using scale 75 black primer to see how thin we can make these lines. I'm running the airbrush at 35 PSI, uh, what is recommended by the manufacturer and it's what I normally run the airbrush at. I'm trying to make as fine a line as possible. And if you are new to airbrushing, well, welcome to this wonderful and frustrating world. Whenever you begin an airbrushing session, play tic-tac-toe with yourself. It's something I recommend to any new student because it gives you a nice sense of trigger control. The zeros, the dots, the straight lines. It's a nice introduction. It's a nice way of guess, sharpening your claws when it comes to using the airbrush. And then after a while, you'll be able to write your name. And after a while, you'll be able to write your name as finely as you can with a pen. But that does require a little bit of practice. Okay, let's have a look at Dawn. Let's see if this covers. So I'm just giving this a nice blast with the airbrush. As you can see, it's a much wider dispersal pattern than the custom Micron. Uh, unfortunately, we do get some bubbles on the surface because of the casting. When these miniatures are cast, mold release agent is put in with them and sometimes it can cause it to bubble. It's important not to keep blasting your miniature, just allow it to settle. Some will bind onto the surface, and then you can build on in layers. Okay, let's see how this thing handles with the supposedly fine detail. I've used uh, Eclipse airbrushes in the past, 0.35, and it does give some really decent coverage, so I'm curious to see what this does. This is the very first spray, uh, live on screen. I mean, I'm pretty confident because it's an Iowata. Holding my breath now, I know the end result. Okay, will I brush this again? 35 de uh, sorry, 45 degree angle, 35 psi, using Medea Comart opaque white. Coverage is smooth, even. There's no spitting. I mean, the initial test for this really positive. I was even able to do really fine detail stuff like the horns. I got precise streams of paint with no sputter. And user experience is a big reason why I like to use Iowata airbrushes over other brands. You only really notice an airbrush when it stops working. I just want the damn thing to work. And that's what this gave me. That's, that's what Iowata gives me. And hell, if it doesn't work, there's a 10-year warranty on each brush if you buy through airbrushes.com. Let's take this sucker apart. So it's been cleaned up. And I want to see what the different components are. So the cap breaks down into two pieces. And thankfully the cap does come with a little rubber uh, washer in between. I can't tell you the amount of times I've stripped the threads on the tip of my Iowatas. Uh, well, once. Never again. So it strips, together, uh, strips down like any other Iowata. Um, but unlike other, uh, other Iowatas, it does come with a conical head cap. And it's an interesting addition. Um... 
this airbrush has been completely redesigned uh, to give a compact body for greater balance and control. <laughs> now I'm the sort of person who checks the balance of replica sorts, so you can definitely be sure I did check the measure. I did check the balance of this thing. Weighed, measured, I even looked along the barrel of a gun like, <laughs> like it was some kind of pistol. Uh, you can get a little hand cramp when using the airbrusher for hours on end, but that's true of any airbrush. The trigger is slightly farther for forward, so you can get slightly greater control if you do want that absolute precision with your airbrush. You can look along the barrel and it's not interrupted. It's not an interrupted view with the um, uh, gravity feet cup either. So it goes together easily enough, splits apart easily enough. All the component parts are easy to clean up. And easy enough to screw back together again. Again, this is Iowata, so it's all metal. Apart from the rubber band, the rubber washer, which does make it very uh, durable, as well as as well as being all star versatile. Okay, the conclusion. You paint tanks, you paint infantry, you paint busts, you need varnish, you need to use primers, you need to use enamel filters. This airbrush handles them all with a plum. It's a 0.35 nozzle, great for detail, but not fine detail. And it lacks the precision to make those minute base coats or fades that only the most demanding of airbrushes would want to, uh, want to use. If you are that demanding, then the chances are you already own the custom Micron. Again, the, the finest airbrush made by mortal hands. But this price, this airbrush costs nearly half. That is under £200. And it gives you a great Swiss army knife that will enable you to do very fine work. Not extreme detail, but very fine work. It will paint tanks, titans, larger miniatures, give you base coats and smaller miniatures. Hell, I use the airbrush like a glorified base coating tool anyway, so if you don't have the budget to splurge 430 plus on a single airbrush, well think of this, this is a really nice addition to your range, or it's a really nice just prime airbrush to use. I mean ultimately this is a great new addition to the Eclipse range. It certainly spun me around, it certainly changed my mind on side feeds. And I think it will give left-handed users something just utterly, it will leave them utterly delighted. Can I recommend this airbrush? Absolutely. Thoroughly. Yes. It's the Swiss Army knife of airbrushes and it has all-star versatility. Thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you've gained something from it. I hope you've given food for thought. And I'll catch you in the next video.